Doesn't it doesn't make sense to me. This, according to the ATF, is a pistol. Some of you guys disagree with me. I don't think it is a pistol. I think this is an SMG or a SBR or really a, a rifle of some sort. But according to the ATF, this is a pistol. And what makes it illegal right now is that it has this vertical grip on it. Nothing else. Everything else totally fine. But that's what's weird. Th this piece of metal right here is what makes this thing illegal to own, according to the ATF. If this thing is considered a pistol, um, it's meant to shoot one-handed. The second that you hold it this way, without using the vertical grip, caught right here, that is still legal. Once you hold the vertical grip this way, and well, actually, by having it on your weapon, that's where it's illegal. But once you hold it this way, according to ATF, that's the felony. That's the crime right there. Now, I did pay the $200 tax stamp um, that the ATF extorted from me, that way I could turn this thing into an SBR, or a short-barreled rifle, and now this vertical grip is legal, according to the ATF. And I can shoulder the weapon now, so what I can do right here is I can shoulder the weapon, I can grab it however I want, clean the vertical grip. The question that we're trying to identify here is, do the vertical grips actually make that big of a difference? And if they do make a huge difference, for example, they improve accuracy, they improve handling, why does the ATF not want us to have a more accurate weapon for home defense, for, for out here sports shooting. I don't understand. I just, I don't get why they don't want us to have better handling on our weapons. So we're gonna test it out today. We're gonna test out if these things actually help. Now this one's chambered in nine millimeter. I truly believe that the caliber makes a huge difference. For example, if you're shooting, I don't know, a 308 or a 300 wind mag, you're gonna have a little bit more muzzle rise, especially on a short barrel. Um, this is chambered in nine millimeter. You don't have that much kick or recoil to begin with. So does the vert grip really matter? Okay, so for the first test, we're gonna be shooting the six hour spear chambered in 300 blackouts. So what we're gonna be doing is doing two things here. One, I'm gonna be testing how fast I can shoot 10 rounds. My friend Zane here has a little beeper. Shooter ready. Shooter ready. Better hope you are. And uh, we're gonna see how fast I can shoot it while using the vertical grip. Number two, we're going to be seeing how much muzzle rise I have while shooting with the vertical grip versus a horizontal or no grip. So we're going to do a couple different tests. I don't think out of a semi-auto platform, you're going to have that much of a difference. But I want to show it to you guys right here, okay? And again, as you guys know, I'm an average shooter. I've never been trained. I've never served overseas. I just shoot guns for fun. So I am most likely one of you guys. Uh, so here we go. Test number one, 10 shots as I can on target. Okay. All 10 are on target. I'm impressed with my ability to shoot 10 rounds. How fast was that? 1.69. Yeah, sub two. Dang, dude. 10 rounds, sub two. No idea what that means. Now in the second test, I've already swapped out my Troy Industry vertical grip for a, this is a Magpul angled for grip, okay? I do want to know that this thing is totally legal on your pistols that haven't been SBR'd. Now this one, this lower is SBR'd. It's totally legal for me to have a a traditional stock and a uh, foregrip on it. So here we go. So this one's just a little bit slower, if anything. By if the, if anything. Wait one of a second. Okay. Tenth of a second. Let's go check it out. But I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think there's two in here. There's that's that one. Okay. Yeah. okay. This one's better. This one was better. For the third test with finger blackout, um, no grips. We're going to be doing 10 rounds on target. I felt like I missed one, not going to lie. Maybe it matters. Um, I will say that was not as comfortable as I'm shooting. I felt like I focused more on my hand positioning and trying to shoot. It didn't feel comfortable to me. So if the only thing you have is no grip and you're used to it, Maybe it won't make a huge difference, but for me right now on target, I felt like, you can actually see, I felt like I was pulling them more to the right. Like it was kind of slipping out. Um, I didn't like it. I might have missed one. Oh, well. No, you missed. I, I, I felt like I was swinging a little bit to the right. Now you would probably see this more in a full auto platform, um, not in a semi-auto platform. We don't know. Um, what we do know is according to Zane, um, it's been pretty active the whole time, right? So it's not helping me shoot faster. One of my theories was, is if you can stay on target quicker, you're gonna have that follow-up shot a little bit faster with maybe a vertical grip. 
it seems like no matter how I'm holding it, my follow-up shots are still fairly consistent on target at 40 feet, by the way. I don't know if you guys can tell, we're 40 feet back. This is Reese. You guys know Reese. Hello. We all love Reese. Um, we do. We're going to be transitioning to the 5.56. Five, this is a six spear. Uh, we're going to start off with no grip, kind of do it in reverse. I'm an average shooter. What are you? Slightly below average shooter. So oh, that was really good. good. <laughs> <laughs> were, were you trying, dude? Yeah. Can we review that comment where he goes, I'm slightly below average? I don't know what to think about this, dude. I mean, um, this would be pretty good. Reese did admit that he was below average, which I concur. And this, again, was without any type of grip. I am hoping that a vertical grip will make you shoot better. I am hoping the same. Yeah. Go ahead, Reese. Okay. Ten more rounds. Whatever you say. I'll do it. I'll shoot. With the 45 degree angled grip, you technically shaved off 0.2 seconds, but also you did hit all 10 rounds on target. I did, and my spread was shorter. And your spread was definitely shorter. Yeah. Um, improvement. Improvement. 1% every day. <laughs> to be fair, without even measuring it, I don't know if you really make a huge difference. It's with nothing on it. That's what threw me off. That was very uncomfortable. It throws you off. Yeah, when there's nothing on this thing, when this rifle is uh, naked and you're holding it like this, that does kind of throw you off. So far in a semi platform out of the Thunder Blackout, out of the 5.56, five, I don't think the vert grip or, or angled grip really matters. Maybe just having something there to be able to pull into your shoulder is what we're trying to get at. That maybe helps some. That's people. how I usually hold it. Is I kind of C clamp it. Yeah, I kind of C clamp that thing like yeah. this. Uh, that's how all the cool kids do it, I guess, these days. So that's what I kind of like. I like having that. Uh, but what we're going to do now is we're going to transition to full auto, and uh, we're going to shoot the full auto and see does a vertical grip help when you have a lot faster uh, rate of fire. For the next portion of our test, we're going to be shooting full auto using the vert grip. Now, this full auto weapon is not mine. This is on loan from our boys at Infinity Targets. That's me. <laughs> we'll be doing two tests, one with the 300 Blackout and one with the 556. That, uh, that's quick. That's real quick. I think I missed like half my shots. I literally saw myself go off target. But at 40 feet, he's still dead. I just only hit him five times. Uh... Wow, dude. That's pretty crappy. To be fair. To be fair. It went bloom, bloom, bloom really fast. It, it, it did. Actually went pew, pew, pew really fast. I was holding this thing tight, holding it in. I can definitely see where a vertical grip on a full auto makes sense, to be fair, versus a semi-auto. Because um, you're. I literally saw myself going up off, uh, off target. Uh, that's why you want a vert grip right there. Let's take it off and let's just run just a... Um, actually, let's run no grip and see if that helps at all. I think it's going to be a little bit harder to control. Obviously, you guys watching are going to say, no, no, Jordan, you're more used to full auto now. Like, you're going to have better accuracy, better control. I, I get that concept. That's why I wanted to start with the vertical grip first because that one for sure might have played a huge difference. The point I want to make is that having any type of grip on a full auto is going to be more helpful for controlling it. After this 10-round test, I want to do a full mag dump to kind of show you guys how much vertical incline you guys have running full auto um, and so why you want that vertical grip to kind of pull it back down and pull it into your chest one two three four five six seven eight nine ten there's no way i hit all ten weirdly enough uh holding it this way landed all ten shots on target uh, i will say i didn't feel like i, I rode up as much um, let's do one more with the vert grip. I'll do just a whole mag dump on the other mag, and I guess we'll see if I can feel a difference. Um, in theory, the vertical grip should actually be better right there. Like, I, I can be tight right here, and this is going to go up still. I can pull in. still better than a vertical grip where, where I'm pulling down. Pull down, yeah. At least let's, me, let's run it again. I mean, we're doing this because we don't know. You guys don't know. That's why you're watching. Science. Uh, spray
there's at least 25. Um, I, I caught myself, I was kind of going up. I was aiming down low. I kind of caught myself coming up with it. And this vert grip really did kind of help me pull that weapon back down. Probably because we just got done talking about this concept. I felt like I was able to like actually control the, the muzzle rise with the vertical grip. I know you could probably control it like this too. I just think with the weird angle of your wrist, it's easier to pull down than it is to kind of push down. That's not, that's not normal movement. Um, I'm impressed 25 on target at 40 feet full auto, uh, with the vert grip. So not bad. Let's switch it up though. I think a huge factor in determining if these actually help you or work, um, is in a shorter barrel. You can already use this on a 16, on a 16 inch barrel. The ATF is already cool with that. What they're not cool with is when you chop your barrel in half and you use a vert grip on a pistol or something that's not registered as an SBR. So let's test out our theory. We got 20 rounds of uh, 300 blackout. We're gonna go to full auto on target um, and see how the recoil management is. Uh, 300 blackout, um, test number two, uh, 20 rounds with the vertical grip. I won't be holding it. I hate, well, I have to say, I hate holding it this way. Um, that is not how I ever hold it. I would probably do more like this. But for the experiment's sake, I am going to do this um, just to kind of help try to pull that thing down. I will say, shooting this one, holding that thing down, as you can see, let's go look at the target. Um, I, I did feel a little bit, a little bit more recoil management as I was hitting my target. Um, this was a little bit tighter spread. I was trying to start a little bit low. As you guys can see, it kind of works up because uh, it is running full auto, obviously. Uh, in this specific case, I do think the vertical grip is helping. Maybe it's in my head, it's subconscious. I definitely can't give a definitive answer on a full auto, but I would have to say at this point on semi-auto, it can't possibly help that much. I think more importantly at this point, it's more of what are you comfortable with and uh, and what you're used to. If you're used to holding it like this, your C-clamp, you'll probably be a little bit more accurate that way. If you're used to holding it like this, maybe it works good for you. Maybe you can't afford anything and so you just kind of hold it like this. Um, that's what works for you. It seems like it's it's working. Keep doing it. We're gonna do a few more tests though on some nine mil and on a TP9 to show you where it does play a huge role because on a traditional rifle, even a SBR, it doesn't seem to help that much but I have a hunch it might help quite a bit on a very short SBR. So watch this. Huge, huge thanks to Infinity Targets. Um, these guys are freaking awesome. If you haven't bought their targets yet, please use my discount code. They brought the full auto toys out today, which are freaking awesome. It helped us with our experiments. This is all science in the name of science. Um, any new targets coming out anytime soon? Anything new? Those guys. If you guys order these guys, you can turn them around. And you can see all their internals, so you kind of know what organ you're blasting. How about we do 50% off for the first 24 hours the video goes live? Okay. Okay. I like that, dude. My man, dude. Give me some. That's yes. Cool. Uh, yeah, you heard them. 24 hours. 50% off Infinity Targets. I would order a whole bunch, resell them later in the black market. In this specific test, I think we shall see that this vertical grip is going to play a huge role um, in accuracy in handling this weapon. This is the TP9, BNT TP9, um, 9 millimeter. I think this is only a 5 inch barrel. This thing one handed as a, in the pistol form, this came as a pistol, um, it has a lot of recoil to it. We'll have to pull this trigger back. Watch how much, there's just so much there. It's a really tough trigger, probably like an 8 pound trigger. Um, and the reset really sucks too. And so as I'm doing that, I'm almost like wobbling my own gun. So I think in this case, the support handle up front or the vertical grip is going to play huge. So let's test out five rounds on target. Um, one handed, okay? Oh. That, 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 is, that is perfect. It is so hard to shoot this thing with the heaviness of it, um, the, the kick of it, the trigger. I was able to only hit one on target, okay? 
So now I want to shoot um, five more using two hands on target, and you can watch the difference in the recoil management right here. Okay, here we go. In this case, I hit three of the five. So I got a lot of improvement there just by having that vertical grip and using two hands. Now, watch how important the stock plays a role in hitting all five shots, okay? All five, all five on target. Um, and it was a lot quicker. I don't know if you guys could tell that um, through watching it back, but that was a lot quicker this added so much more stability than the vertical grip by itself. So even on a pistol, this, this was a pistol at one point, take away the stock, take away the vertical grip, this came as a pistol, okay? By adding in these two features, you add a lot of stability combined together. Um, I can see why the ATF does not want a actual stock that you put into your shoulder on a SBR pistol without paying a tax stamp. I do not understand still why you can't use a vertical grip. And I don't know why they don't want you making a little bit more accurate for, for safety reasons. Um, Cause in this case, if I'm not here at the range and I'm just losing control of my weapon, um, that can be scary. That's not safe for me or for anyone else around me. Um, I, I don't know why the ATF cares. So where I get the most confused is this. This is a pistol according to the ATF. Um, some of you guys may comment and say, that's not a pistol, that's a rifle, that's an SMG or it's an SBR. Uh, this is a pistol, that's why we have a pistol brace on this thing, um, and it can fold out of the way, but this is a pistol. This is only a 5-inch, 6-inch barrel. Um, what you see here is a faux suppressor on top, okay? So in this configuration, without it being an SBR, you can use no grip in the front, or you can use any of these options right here. There are actually probably dozens of other options. They call these things angled grips because they have a 45 degree angle to them. We also just have um, hand stops um, like this one. You can just hand stop this thing and that's designed so your hand won't go past the uh, end of the rig right there. All these would be considered perfectly legal on, on this gun, okay? Um, the second that you throw on something like this, vertical grip, um, that is now a felony. Uh, you're going to jail. Um, even if you cut one in half and have it kind of angled, that's can still considered a vertical grip because it is 90 degree perpendicular to the barrel, okay? Where things get a little bit tricky is when you have something like this. That is off-centered. If you were to put this thing on, as you can see, it's no longer 90 degrees. It's maybe only 88, 87 and a half degrees. It is a little bit off-centered. Um, and so a lot of people try to use these BCMs as a gray area or a loophole um to get out of having a true vertical grip that's what's crazy to me is basically having a pistol you cannot use these certain grips now do these grips actually help you um from what i've seen today the answer is no i don't think this actually helps you especially the average shooter none of these options helped me stay on target or had a faster follow-up shot all they really do is add comfortableness to how I'm shooting and how I'm holding it. I can still shoot it just as fast, this is accurate, regardless if I'm using a vertical grip or no grip, or sorry, if an angled grip or no grip. It comes down to like, what, what do you train with too? Like if you're not comfortable with something and you train with it, you're gonna eventually be comfortable with it and therefore more accurate with that, that grip. Absolutely. And so why does the ATF allow us to use whatever vertical grip we want here but not on this thing. This is a true nine millimeter pistol caliber carbine. This is tax stamp, so I have my vertical grip on it. So I'm going to test a couple more things with this to kind of see, are we going about this entire thing wrong? Maybe the vertical grips um, and the angled for grips or the lack of a grip helps you go from target to target better and not so much as recoil management. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a whole bunch of targets lined up we're going to be going from target to target, two or three rounds on each, each and every single target, kind of going across and seeing if a vertical grip helps us or if that kind of hurts us. I believe that these vertical grips help the most in your vertical recoil, especially in full auto. In semi-auto, they probably do nothing. It is a bigger, cooler grip in my opinion. Um, but will it help us side to side? Probably not. That's where I think of having a thumb over the top and proper um, grip with a angled grip or no grip 
might help us transition from left to right. So let's run a few tests as an average Joe and see if I can see a difference by doing that. So w without looking back at the footage, what I've already noticed is by holding this thing as a vertical grip like this, like a true vertical grip, every time that I transition this target, the gun weight, because the optic's pretty heavy, wants to rotate my whole gun. My gun is literally rotating as I swing it across and as I come back. So I felt like I'm doing this every two shots. So I'll do the same exact thing now uh, with a different grip and let you guys know how I feel about it. And so as you can see, my hand positioning, um, this thing's in the way, but if you're on this side, the hand positioning is a lot different now. I can throw my thumb over. This is very comfortable. I have my fingers wrapped around this whole thing. I feel like I already have better control in terms of swaying. That was noticeably different. That gave me a lot more, uh, I wanna call it handling abilities, uh, moving left to right, especially in the semi-automatic platform. You're not having such rapid shots you have to worry about your weapon going up in the air. If you're worried about maybe taking down multiple intruders in your house or shooting multiple targets left to right, that swaying motion, way more controllable with an angled for grip not the vertical one. What I like about these Troy Industry vertical grips is one, um, you can make them pretty short. Um, so you can still hold it this way, or like I do, I kind of C-clamp it, my thumb goes over the top, but I like having my pinky kind of hanging down low like this. But what's cool is, is if you buy a whole bunch of them, like I had before, you can kind of combine them together and uh, make a longer vertical grip. Here we go. That just looks goofy, dude. That just looks real goofy. Further away, less control. Closer, better, really good, okay? Let's go ahead and shoot some like this, just traditional, you know? Here you go. I don't like that. Um, I don't know why anyone would, uh, but I wanted to showcase you guys that the longer your vertical grip is, um, the less it actually helps you, literally. So in the case of the ATF, the longer the grip, the less it helps you. Why do they care if we have a long grip on a uh, pistol? Doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. In conclusion, after shooting so many rounds, I truly do not think it matters what type of grip you run on your gun. Um, whether it's a 16 inch barrel like this guy or you know uh, an MPX, um, I don't think it matters. Where it might matter, where it did matter, in my opinion, was running full auto. Having a good grip on a full auto, that one I can tell. I, you do want a, a good grip on a full auto. But most of us aren't running full auto. The point of this video was to identify a couple things. One of them, what grip works best? I was unable to do that today. We, we were not able to do that because I think it comes down to preference. Whatever you train with, whatever you're used to, it's gonna work best for you. The second thing I wanted to identify today was, is the ATF, well, they're not in the right, but are they in the right by saying that we should not use vertical grips on a pistol um, or in a unregistered SBR, short barreled rifle? And to be honest, I don't see why. After using it today on SBRs and on rifles, I don't see a, a grip making that much of a difference. The bigger difference I think comes in the stock. We, we did have a good time shooting uh, full autos with the Infinity Target guys. Those guys are awesome. And so going back to the semi-automatic platform, does grip matter? I think the answer is no. Um, that may offend some of you guys because you know more than I do. That's okay. But again, for the average shooter, um, it didn't really help me in any way.